I dearly thank NABA for this honor, this significant opportunity to speak before all the flagtastic NABA members and along with fellow Philadelphians gathered here today. I am also immensely grateful for my fellow partners for Civic Pride family of co-founders, board members, and many devoted volunteers who have been committed to this wondrous Philly flag for a good long time, helping to bring its meaningful message to the citizenry, especially to our Philly youth. I welcome everyone to Philadelphia with the glow of our city colors, our Philly flag colors, in my shoes, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, shining over the sky in our beautiful cityscape. I welcome everyone with our city motto, Philadelphia Minetto. Translation, let brotherly love continue. The key word being let. It's a choice to let love continue. This Latin phrase is a part of our city coat of arms, proudly displayed upon our Philadelphia civic flag. These meaningful words inspired a Philly flag song by music teacher Ed McHugh. And these words have inspired hundreds of children, like Elijah Pompey, Words matter to convey a message, especially words on a flag. Here's a bit of the song and the dynamic Mr. Pompey, age 10. during the 2014 Philly Flag Day celebration gives you a feel for the enthusiasm displayed at these events. From 2007 to 2015, every March 27th, the adoption date of the Philly Flag, PFCP, Partners for Civic Pride, with support from the city and generous donors, orchestrated a Philly Flag Day program, which included an anniversary Philly Flag raising at the Municipal Services Building across from City Hall, earmarking a specific day for citizens to unite and celebrate the uplifting Philadelphia Minetto message displayed upon our city flag. Philadelphia Minetto, let brotherly love continue through peace, hope, justice, and prosperity. A most remarkable Philadelphian, Harold Fitzgerald, Jerry Lenfest, who sadly passed in 2018, was our devoted patron and champion of the Philly flag. He made the presentation of the Philadelphia Minetto Awards possible, along with most of the significant elements of the Philly Flag Day celebrations from 2012 through 2015. Here we see Marvis Frazier accepting the inaugural 2012 Philadelphia Minetto Award for his dad, Smokin' Joe Frazier, who did so much to help our Philly youth at his famous boxing gym. 
The Flag Day program grew to include four Philadelphia Minotaur Awards, an award for peace, one for hope, one for justice, and one for prosperity. Presented annually to those who embody and actively live the city flag's message for the betterment of Philadelphia. Here's the magnificent flagpole at the MSB Municipal Services Building. We would crank it up, and when it got to the top, sing happy birthday. In a moment, you're going to see our, our dear bicycle hammer uh, cranking up that uh, flag to the top. There was always a powerful moment during the Philly Flag Day celebrations when all citizens in attendance would recommit to the Philadelphia Minetto message by joining together to recite My Pledge to Philadelphia, written by Will Smith Sr., my co-founder, with in input from PFCP board. Again, words matter. Hello, Philadelphia. My name is Will Smith Sr. And I'm a proud to be born and raised Philadelphian. I started my businesses here. I raised my family here. And I made my closest friends right here in Philadelphia. And here in Philadelphia, we have a flag, a beautiful flag. And today is its birthday. I ask you now to please join me in reciting for the first time ever our pledge to our flag. My city of brotherly love. My city of brotherly love. To you I pledge my pride. To you I pledge my pride. To peace, hope, justice, and prosperity. To peace, hope, justice, and prosperity. By these principles I will abide. I will abide. Let them be my guide. Let them be my guide. I love you, Philadelphia. I love you, Philadelphia. You are my home. You are my home. Let us live together and grow. Let us live together and grow. Philadelphia, Manetto. Philadelphia, Manetto. Woohoo! Armed with the Philly flag pledge and handmade city flags, PSCP taught children to be a beacon, a light to shine the flag's love message in their own community. They were taught to stop conflicts with a hand signal saying, Philadelphia Minetto, let brotherly love continue. I must uh, add that the apple didn't fall far from the tree. In 2019, Jerry's thoughtful eldest son, H. Chase Lenfest, stepped to the plate, excited to help promote PFC, P PFCP's mission. The H. Chase Lenfest Family Foundation was our title sponsor for the 2020 Philly Flag Day event. That was to include the first ever Philly Flag Day parade. We're big on parades here. When the pandemic abruptly canceled the amazing plans in the works, but the COVID monster didn't cancel PFCP or our Philadelphia Minetto spirit. Now more than ever, it's time to fly it and live by it as my co-founder Rob Stoller wisely taught us to say, this powerful flag has the potential to be the ultimate universal connector for Philly, our roadmap to creating the best Philadelphia we can be by flying the flag and by living its message. So now that you know a bit more about PFCP and this lady in a costume whose strap keeps falling on, it's time to share my twofold purpose for this presentation. I am here today to state and unequivocally prove the Philadelphia Civic Flag is the first official city flag in the nation. Number two, I will convey the importance of words, symbols, crests, and colors as a means of imparting significant messages upon flags to promote pride of place and city, uh, civic pride. Good Flag, Bad Flag, written by NAVA's own, the wonderful Ted Kay, presents five basic design principles that one should follow to create a good flag. Simply stated, a flag should be simple in its design. No words, no crests, only two to three colors. While the use of simplicity is often a distinctive and admirable quality in design, where flags are concerned, there should be exceptions to these simple flag design rules. Simplicity alone 
should not take precedence over purposeful details in design. Because once again, words, symbols, crests, and colors are displayed upon flags to impart meaningful, even powerful messages. And this has been the case for centuries. Our own U.S. President's flag is a strong example for this argument. The message, E Pluribus Unum, out of many one, on a gorgeous crest with many colorful details. And I'll just say here, you heard Sheila Hess say that there's people in council currently uh, considering redesigning our Philadelphia flag. Um, and I hope to get to tell them how important our, our flag is and its message and its crest. Along with conveying the significance of our city flag's message, it's equally important to establish the historical significance of the Philadelphia Civic Flag. I will share my humble research as a curious school teacher, eager to discover and yes, uncover the story behind the Philly flag. Little did I know that my interest in this flag would reveal the important fact that this is the first official city flag in America. Official meaning a flag ordinance has been written for the official adoption of a city flag by the mayor and council. First and foremost, it's important to recognize John M. Purcell, James A. Croft, and Rich Monahan's landmark publication, American City Flags, 150 Flags from Accra to Yonkers. This ambitious book brings to print the most significant body of information about United States flag ever compiled, unquote. It is because of the collaborative effort of Purcell, Croft, and Monaghan that one may proclaim that the Philadelphia Civic Flag is the first official city, city flag in the nation, along with a bit of additional research on my part. We may be enlightened to this profound fact by reading one sentence in the introduction of American City Flags, quote, among the first cities to adopt flags officially were Philadelphia 1895, Cleveland and Knoxville in 1896, and Pittsburgh and Raleigh, 1899. Matt O'Connor, Humphrey Flag Company, Philadelphia, PA, cross-referenced all of the city uh, flags documented in this book, producing an easy-to-read listing of city flags with corresponding official, unofficial, and modified dates as a clear verification of this important flag fact. Matthew kindly shared this listing with me. Indeed, the Philadelphia flag is at the top of the list as the first official city flag. New York City has an unofficial city flag in 1825, but it was not made official with a city ordinance until 1915. Philadelphia holds that distinguished honor. At this point, I must acknowledge the esteemed Ted Kay again, NAVA secretary, kindly communicated to me that the American City Flags book is not a complete survey of all city flags in the nation. Ted did agree that one may conclude, based upon the comprehensive collection surveyed in this book, that the Philadelphia flag is the first big city municipal flag. In order to prove conclusively that our Philly flag is actually the first of its kind in the nation, I took a deep dive into the top 10 oldest cities in America to see if these cities had adopted an official city flag with a flag ordinance prior to Philly's 1895 ordinance. Reason suggests that the oldest cities may have the oldest official city flags. Well, I am quite happy to say my research keeps the Philadelphia flag in a number one spot. Here are my findings regarding the top 10 oldest cities and their official and unofficial city flags, all created after 1895. Number one, St. Augustine, Florida. Number two, Jamestown slash Williamsburg, Virginia. Number three, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Number four, Hampton, Virginia. Number five, Kakauton, Virginia. Number six, Newport News, Virginia. Number seven, Albany, New York. Number eight, Jersey City, New Jersey. Number nine, Plymouth, Massachusetts. Number 10, Weymouth, Massachusetts. This may be the earliest known variant of the flag of Philadelphia using 
the coat of arms designed by Colonel Frank Mark Edding and later used in the official city flag designed by Reverend Dr. Henry C. McCook. Edding's COA design added the distinctive phrase Philadelphia Minetto. The red and blue garments worn by the female supporters are not the official colors. Um, you see it there on the left. Uh, that designated in the 1895 city flag ordinance. This image may explain why or how the current city flag in use today on the right has these red and blue garment colors, ignoring the 1895 ordinance colors. It's always been a mystery to me why the city doesn't fly the Philly flag as described in the official city ordinance. The flag on the uh, right is the flag uh, that the city flies on all of its city buildings. Now the member, Nolan Eikhoff, also shared an interesting flag finding on a Philadelphia flag that dates to 1888, seven years before the 1895 official adoption date. This flag may have been produced for a parade or for advertising purposes. It does not make use of the Edding COA used in the 1895 Philly flag design. And again, the colors used are not the colors described in the city ordinance. This I find fascinating, thanks to uh, Jim Murphy. It's a beaded plateau Indian bag, circa 1910-1930, with the U.S. flag, Liberty Bell, and what is that blue and yellow flag? The image on this old relic baffled an employee at a Cincinnati, Ohio auction house <coughs> who wanted to know about the blue and yellow flag and wrote to NAVA member and tribe bar expert Mason Kay for an answer. Mason Kay used the American City Flags book to identify the flag. It's the Philadelphia flag. This image illustrates three remarkable Philly firsts. The Liberty Bell, the first bell of freedom, the stars and stripes, our nation's first flag, and in azure blue and golden yellow, the nation's first official city flag. Here we see Reverend Dr. Henry C. McCook. He was a reverend, a revered Presbyterian minister, esteemed entomologist, President of the Entomology Society, and Vice President of the Academy of Natural Sciences, as well as an extraordinary artist, an astute heraldic scholar, and a devoted, engaged citizen of Philadelphia until his death, October 31st, 1911. Because of Philadelphia's flag's significant role in the history of American city flags, in my humble opinion, it should never be changed or considered for redesign. Rather, this unique flag and its designer, Reverend Dr. Henry C. McCook, should be held in the highest regard and acknowledged for this notable contribution to the world of exology. We know that McCook designed the Philly flag, but how was this flag, first official city flag, selected? This is an unanswered question in the landmark publication, American City Flags, which records how each city flag was selected. Page 258 reads, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, how selected, unknown. The answer to the origins of this flag may be found in four document items recorded in the Journal of the Common Council of Philadelphia from October 4th, 1894 to March 28th, 1895. The info in these four items has also strengthens the case for the first uh, official city flag being the first of its kind. Item one, Mayor Edwin S. Stewart's letter reveals his approval of McCook's new city flag idea while addressing council to consider the correspondence and act upon it. Item two is actually McCook's letter that was written to Mayor Stewart October 3rd, 1894 and presents his inspiration for the original idea. The creation of a city flag, he puts in quotes. He made, he ventured to make some sketches, uh, incorporating the COA, adding COA, and the official city colors, blue and gold, into a city flag design. Uh, uh, sadly, those sketches ha um, have not been recovered. Uh, being a Heldrick scholar, he also suggests the shade of blue to be used and how to best represent metallic gold color on cloth for a flag um, in this letter. McCook's two-page letter does not use any existing American city flag in his case for a Philadelphia city flag. Instead, his letter gives examples of leading world cities uh, to possess and display on proper occasions a civic banner. And he also mentions the United States flag. Moreover, 
quote, a civic flag is in calculated to inspire a spirit of civic loyalty. In a different and narrower sphere, the display and constant use of a Philadelphia city flag would act towards the strengthening of civic pride, precisely as similar use of the national flag tends to foster a spirit of national loyalty. The overall tone um, in McCook's letter, when read in its entirety, gives the feel of an official city flag as a novel idea, a first for our nation. Also, really important to note, McCook's letter answers the intriguing question regarding the origins of the flag's colors. McCook mentions the ancient civic colors, which relates to the official city colors, blue and gold, designated by the 1854 and 1874 ordinances without mention of Sweden. For years, the flag's colors have been mistakenly attributed to the Swedes for their early settlement that preceded William Penn. One can see how that correlation could have been derived from the colors of the Swedish flag, but it is lore, not the truth of the matter. In item three, there is further proof in, uh, stated when the council committee assigned to the task of creating the first Philadelphia City Flag Ordinance deliberates about the proper flag colors and ultimately adopts McCook's suggestion for the shades of colors for the new city flag design, again, without any mention of the Swedish colors. This document further reveals the how behind the creation of the Philly flag. Actually, it seemed wise to assign this unique venture to a committee already formulated. The committee on the 4th of July celebration. This committee dealt with matters involving the U.S. flag and the country's U.S. flag celebration. It was a good fit to have this group work through the necessary steps involved in the creation of a new city flag and new city flag ordinance. And they did their work. Item four is the, uh, the first new city flag ordinance official in the documents. Here on the left, details uh, from an, a 1915 journal in Common Council uh, details the specifics of Colonel Frank Mark Edding's 1874 Seal of Philadelphia. Edding was a Philadelphia heavyweight of the late 19th century. He served as director of public schools, chairman of the Committee to Restore Independence Hall, and chief of the historical department of the Centennial Exposition, the 1876 World's Fair. Edding added the Latin phrase, Philadelphia Minetto, to the COA city seal. It's a macaronic phrase, which is when a Latin word is paired with any other language. Philadelphia is Greek for brotherly love. Minetto is Latin for to continue. Thus, the translation is, let brotherly love continue. On the right, the document details the new official standard of the city, the civic flag, and verifies the official adoption date, March 27th, 1895. March 27th is the day annually when this historic flag and its Philadelphia Minetto message has been and should continue to be celebrated by the city of Philadelphia, much like June 14th, Flag Day is the day to honor the American flag. Here is the Edding Seal of the City of Philadelphia, adopted February 14, 1874, used at present without the date 1701, and also the Edding Coat of Arms. This historic version of the Philadelphia Civic Flag aligns with the 1895 ordinance, displaying the correct COA and colors. McCook had a stroke of genius using the Edding, CEO, uh, Edding coat of arms in his flag design. He understood the powerful heraldic symbols and message that Frank Edding so thoughtfully incorporated into his 1874 COA design. Let's take a closer look. There are two strong and nurturing female supporters presenting the message. The right supporter wears a garland of peace and holds the anchor of hope. The left supporter holds a cornucopia of plenty or prosperity. An equal scale of justice is centered high above all. Down low, a white ribbon with the phrase Philadelphia Minetto. Important to note, the background yellow color of the, of the 
cloth is used to denote skin tone. The female supporters are generic, representing all ethnicities. You can now decode the message, Philadelphia Manetto, let brotherly love continue through peace, hope, justice, and prosperity for all. It doesn't get any better than that. This Philly flag is indeed a roadmap, showing us the elements needed to be the best city we can be for everyone. The PA Historical and Museum Commission verified my initial first city flag findings February 21st, 2014, and approved a city marker to proclaim this historic fact. A secondary review of my research was verified by the esteemed Philadelphia historian, James Jim Mundy, Philadelphia Union League. March 27, 2015, marked the 120th anniversary of America's first city flag. PFCP, in partnership with the City of Philadelphia, had a 27 inch by 27 inch from March 27th bronze plaque produced and installed on the large stone plinth of the majestic Philly flag pole atop the Philadelphia Art Museum Rocky Steps. The plaque honors the Philadelphia flag, its Philadelphia Veneto message, and the designer, Reverend Dr. Henry C. McCook, for all time. I would be remiss not to mention the insightful connections McCook made with his study of the natural world, with comparisons to the human world, in his illustrated landmark book, Ant Communities and How They Are Governed, a study in natural civics. Surely his idea to create a Philadelphia flag to connect and unite the citizens was inspired by his intense study and admiration for ant communities and the perfection he observed in the governance of their commune. To quote Kira Vidminsky from her article in the Academy of Natural Sciences Frontier Magazine, Winter 2012, quote, McCook's interest in the similarities between insect and human societies is evident in ant communities and how they are governed, a study in natural civics, 1909, in which he suggested one could learn from natural history. His words, quote, if socialism as a form of human government would be equally or even approximately successfully observed, it must first attain that, per that perfect individual discipline and absolute self-control, self-abnegation, self-surrender, and self-devotion to the good of the whole community that one sees in the commonwealth of ants. I think I admire McCook's observations and sensitivity to the natural world most of all, how he learned such valuable lessons from one of nature's, nature's smallest creatures. And because he did, we have a Philadelphia civic flag. So, the research presented in the American City uh, Flags book, along with my additional research of the top 10 oldest cities in America, combined with the council uh, journal documents, I am confident in saying our Philadelphia Civic Flag is indeed the first officially adopted city flag in America. It is the oldest official municipal flag, yet the flag is not an antique artifact, but is honored, used, and meaningful to Philadelphians today. May I close? From 2015, Philly Flag Day inside City Hall, a final call to action to a final testament today to the fact that words matter on a flag, to carry uplifting messages, to foster pride of place, and to unite communities for the good of all, for all our citizen ants. Here's Commander Ant Jeremiah Johnson and Elijah Pompey, one year older. The Philly Festival fight for thee! Fight for thee. A, symbol a symbol of our unity! Let brotherly love continue! Huh? And yes, I am proud to be a Philadelphian and wave my Philly flag. I, Elijah Pompey, challenge every citizen of Philadelphia Take this uplifting message on our city flag back to your neighborhoods. Philadelphia Manetto, let brotherly love continue. Peace, hope, justice, and prosperity for all. <laughs> Consider yourself flagged. <laughs> yes. Welcome to Philadelphia. Consider
yourselves flat.